Okay, so in this video we're gonna continue working in our scene and then now we're gonna start working on the lighting and shading for the final uh, results. So let me scrub through here so we can look at the animation. And we might also do some changes on the, on the sizing as well uh, for uh, some of the elements like the shrubs uh, or the trees. But for now, let's start like pick something uh, around uh, 200 like while we're flying and then let's do a render and then see how it looks like. Okay, so it's done rendering and uh, you can see uh, how the lighting looks like uh, and right now we just have the directional light is the main one that's uh, doing the um, emitting the lights for our scene and um, you can see it's not really very re realistic and it's a little bit uh, like flat the lighting you know plus also we still need to tweak the shaders on the trees because there is some of these uh, reflections uh, showing in, in some parts of the tree so we're gonna work on that too so now is the time to start like finalizing these light settings so what I always recommend uh, when we're creating anything like outdoor is not to use the default uh, Maya lights. We should always uh, uh, use uh, like the physical uh, sky lights and physical renders. This way we'll have more accurate results and it's gonna get us like uh, the best. So and Arnold have pretty good uh, stuff we can use. So for now let's save this one. So we save this image and then let's uh, select the directional light and then let's just turn it off. Let's put the visibility zero so this way it's not gonna render. And let's go click on Arnold and then lights and let's go here scroll down to physical sky. And let's create it. So let me close this window. And then you can see here I created this uh, node, the uh, sky dome. And if you we go like uh, to the settings and you can see here uh, the sky give you like an overview of it. And then the color and the color it's it have the settings of the sky uh, itself for the sun uh, direction and uh, you know and all these uh, stuff that we can adjust and the intensity here as well and then the sun size and you can click or unclick enable sun anything you click you can uh, see here will be influence uh, the view here so let's select the AI sky again and then here uh, there is some settings we don't not gonna change much in the actually uh, sky because it's, it's pretty good as it is and give us pretty good results and uh, here the visibility of it you can turn it off so it doesn't show in the render but for us we want to keep everything as it is and uh, this is this, this visibility is the same like if it's visible in all these uh, channels but we, we don't need to change much here, like everything. We want the sky to influence all parts of the image and the shaders. So we don't want to like turn off anything here. And we wanted to cast the shadows, as you can see here, volumetric shadows and also here cast shadows. So everything here in the settings is, is all good. We don't need to really change uh, anything in here. And then this resolution will affect how high res here uh, it's gonna look like we might change the resolution uh, just to remove the noise so it might get a bit noisy if uh, if you keep things low settings so now uh, since I already saved this one let's render the same image and then let's see how it looks like okay so it's done rendering and as you can see first it's really dark and then the second is the render time increased because the render time in the previous image was two minutes and ten seconds now it's 3 minutes and 32 and we kind of using now the minimum settings uh, now I'm using the camera AA is the, the sampling of it so 3 this is gonna influence everything underneath it uh, so we could lower it down to 2 but uh, I, I kept it 3 just because we can get a little bit better results but later on we're gonna be changing this even more uh, so it's really dark so let's start working on the brightening up the, the scene we could change the intensity here uh, it seems like it's locked but you actually could change it here but let's do it from uh, the actual uh, settings inside the sky so if we go inside here the sky and then the intensity here we can change that so let's work on uh, this one and then uh, let's increase it to 10 and it's gonna like start to feel blown out but for the and this is gonna be also influenced by the size of your scene so these numbers might change with uh, in your scene so 
let's go even higher for us like let's go 20 because one is was really really low so let's see so now it feels like it's really too much and now let's render and then see how it looks let's save and then render okay so it's done rendering and uh, you can see the result is pretty like humongous difference between this how everything is so flat and there is like no details showing which is we use the uh, directional light and then using the skylight in Arnold and how like the scene looks totally different and how it looks now much more uh, cinematic and uh, more realistic and you can see the rocks here we scattered around really adds a lot and also increasing the bump map on the ground as you can see here it added a really nice uh, feeling to it that is uh, it's more natural and realistic but in the previous scene with the previous lighting you don't really see any of the de details in here like it's completely hidden because of the lighting setup so this will show you guys how lighting is really important to really bring details that is otherwise you can't really see and uh, for anything outdoor I highly recommend always using like a physical sky uh, from Arnold or any rendering engine you're using because it's gonna give you much more natural and we get these nice long shadows and everything this just looks so much more uh, alive and without even touching the shaders and finalizing them yet it already looks uh, pretty good and of course now it's introduced some noise and uh, in order to like uh, combat this noise and reduce it you can adjust here the samples uh, this samples related to uh, there's there's like samples related to shadows but these samples all if you increase them like to three you'll notice here how the more we increase these samples it reduces uh, the noise in here so comparing to like one it's really noisy but if you go like three it's much better but be keep in mind that this gonna also increase the render time uh, it's gonna make it uh, take longer but I recommend even for like for final render to increase these settings so this way you can get uh, of course it depends on your machine and if you're using a render farm you can decide like which is the final settings but these will be influencing a lot the final look uh, to reduce the noise because now it's pretty noisy comparing to this one uh, but the real the result here is much more realistic and uh, this is what we are looking for so for now I'm gonna keep it uh, like two because we're still building the scene but then the final render will increase these settings to something uh, that will work we'll probably use three for this one uh, and uh, we will we have to do other uh, tweaks into this uh, section here okay so now everything is good so the lighting is good i'm happy with it it looks really nice and then uh, the only thing now we need to keep going is we let's start uh, adjusting the shaders into uh, our scene and just improving them and everything basically and then after that we'll be basically done uh, with creating our scene then we can go into like uh, preparing the render passes okay so see you in the next video